Hello and welcome to MLC TV News Hour, reaching you live from the city of Lakoja, the Confluent City. I am Mono Balagrabo, and these are the headlines. Africa will overcome current challenges, says Osibanja. Federal government to commence the evacuation of 5,600 Nigerian students in Ukraine on Wednesday. Ukraine fighting escalates despite ceasefire talks and Leeds United appoints American Jason Mash as new manager. And now to the news in details. Vice President Yemiosi Banjo Arusha Tanzania affirmed that Africa will overcome its current governance and human rights challenges. Osibanjo spoke at the opening of the 2022 Judicial Year of the African Court on Human and People's Rights in Arusha, Tanzania, where he was Special Guest of Honor. The Senior Special Assistant to the Vice President on Media and Publicity, Lao Lua Kande, disclosed this in a statement titled, How to Guarantee the Africa We Want, by Osibanjo at the African Court's first ever formal year opening in Arusha. The Vice President, who spoke on the theme, The Court, and the Africa we want said for Africa to achieve the desired level of attainment, issues such as poverty, socioeconomic rights, environmental and sustainable development, alongside concerns about democracy and un unconstitutional changes of governments, must be dealt with. Osibanjo expressed optimism that Africa will overcome its current governance and human rights challenges. Nigerians living in a war torn Ukraine will on Wednesday be evacuated back to Nigeria for their safety, says the Foreign Minister Godfrey Onyema. The minister said the first batch of the airlifting is scheduled to take place on Wednesday this week. The House representatives had on Monday invited the Nigerian foreign ministers for a meeting at the Speaker House of Representatives office. Femi Baja BMLA to reinforce the position of the legislature on the plight of Nigerians caught in the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. The Speaker said the House of Representatives will give needed support to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to begin the evacuation of Nigerians back from Ukraine. The evacuation earlier planned for Monday was rescheduled for Wednesday to give enough room for the Ministry, the House and the Nigerian foreign missions in Ukraine Poland and Russia to complete the formalities of moving Nigerians from inside Ukraine to save borders with neighboring countries. But a BML are while commending the ministry for the steps taken far to ensure the safety of Nigerians, the majority of whom are students, however, stated that the country must find ways to quicken its response time to emergencies. He noted that the response mechanisms, including phones, aeroplanes, and other equipments, must really readily be on standby to respond to the life-threatening situations, such as the invasion of Ukraine by Russia and how they affected Nigerians. But Abiyamala recalled how the House was left with no choice but to pass a resolution last week mandating its majority leader, Al Hassan Addo Doguwa, and the Chairman Committee on Foreign Affairs, Yusuf Buba, to work with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and proceed to Ukraine by the weekend to facilitate the airlifting of students home. Onyema, while giving the Speaker a situation report, reassured him that things were under control in Ukraine as the federal government had put necessary arrangements in place to ensure the safe return of Nigerians. He disclosed that in the last few days, the ministry in conjunction with missions had completed formalities for Nigerians to move to safe border points from where they will be transported in buses to airports in neighboring countries. He listed Poland, Romania, Slovakia, Hungary and even Russia among the countries to be used as exit points. The minister who said there were about 5,600 Nigerian students in Ukraine added that there were also non-students, some of whom might not have been legally documented. Bauchi State Governor Bala Mohamed Abdukade on Monday approved the appointment of Nuhu Ahmed Wabi III as the 10th Emir of Jamai. While announcing the appointment in Jamai, the governor said the appointment of Nuhu Ahmed Wabi followed due and careful consideration of the names recommended by the kingmakers of Jamia Emirate Council. Bala Mohamed, represented by the Secretary to the State Government, Barista Ibrahim Kashim, called on the new Emir to discharge his duties in the best interest of his people without preference among them. 
The governor said that the new emir has the best role model in his late father, asking him to copy the exemplary leadership style and qualities by lived by just as he congratulated Nuhu Ahmed Wabi on his appointment. Nuhu Ahmed, who was until the elevation, the Yerima Crown Prince of Jama, is the eldest son of the late monarch who resigned for more than 50 years to become the longest serving traditional ruler in northern Nigeria. The Nigerian Broadcasting Corporation has been asked to make policies that are inclusive by engaging media practitioners before unilaterally making regulatory policies to regulate broadcasting corporation. The national president of the Nigerian Union of Journalists, Chris Izuguzo, made the disclosure at a discussant panel session at a one-day committee initiatives to promote peace with the theme fostering an enabling environment for peace in Nigeria, organized by Savannah Center for Diplomacy and Development, holding at the Transcop Hilton in Abuja. The national president, who was speaking on the topic sensitive policy making for promoting sustainable peace and security, the National Broadcasting Corporation NBC Act Amendment Bill 2020, as case study, taxed the NBC to be inclusive and sensitive to the mood of the country and the people before making policies that regulate the broadcast industry, said the union had no issues with regulations, but said before any regulation, the stakeholders must be consulted. The NUJ president, who noted the time to churn out policies with the mood of the people, described people and making them part of the decision-making as what makes the ingredients of democracy. The NUJ national president noted that when decisions are made without the people's input, it leads to insurrection and would not meet with the people's aspirations. Izugozo pointed out that the NUJ and other stakeholders had to back out of the process to make laws to regulate the broadcast industry, pointing out that the mood of the nation was already charged with people wanting to speak on the rising level of insecurity, poverty, hunger, shrinking levels of revenue, and it said it will be unhealthy making laws to regulate the broadcast industry when people wanted to air their views. Izugozo cautioned media practitioners to be cautious about conflict-sensitive reportage and ensure that their report does not create conflict. He charged media practitioners to see Nigeria as the only country they have and asked that the interest of the country must be protected. The leadership of the Nigerian Labour Congress and LC is leading a protest to the National Assembly to demand overwhelming votes from the federal lawmakers ahead of the clause by clause voting on the ongoing constitutional alteration process. They specifically want the leadership of the National Assembly to include the exclusive legislative list, autonomy for the judiciary, state legislators, local governments, as well as give powers to the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to conduct all local council elections in the country. The protest, which kicked off at the headquarters of the NLC, Central Business District in Abuja, as earlier as 9 a.m. on Monday, is informed by the plans of the National Assembly to amend sections of the 1999 Constitution. Recall the National Assembly by this week began proceedings to amend sections of the Constitution allegedly hindering growth in the country. President of the NLC, Ayuba Waba, who is leading the protest, said governance at the grass level has been mortgaged by a few individuals with vested interest. He said for the long, local government administrations have been at the mercy of the state governors who divert funds meant for infrastructural development at the grassroots to other purposes. According to Waba, the situation where people troop from the rural areas to urban centers on a daily basis cannot be unconnected with the alienation of the local government councils in Nigeria, stressing that when they lack basic necessities of life, they are left with, with no option than to migrate to the city centers. The National Association of Nigerian Students, NANS, has threatened to block all federal government roads in Oyo if the Academic Staff Union of Universities ASU strike continues. The news agency of Nigeria NAN reports that a section of NANS members from Zone B made the threat on Monday. The members spoke while protesting at the Nigerian Union of Journalists Press Center, Iyaganku Ibadan, led by its Southwest coordinator, Stephen Tegbe, 
The association advised the federal government and asked her to resolve their crisis for the sake of the students. It said that there was no need for strike if issues were settled amicably. According to the association, the protest will be held continuously across the country until students' demands are met. Nan reports that the students carried playcards with various inscriptions, some of which are federal government and ASU stop the madness and stop the strike and revitalize our education. We want a short break. We'll be right back. Please do stay with us. Join Fatima Yakubo on Melkite TV online every Saturday by 9 p.m. Proud to have you back. The Oloja of Lagos, Abiola Kosoko, has appealed to the federal and state governments to declare his late forefather's 161-year-old building constructed by the British government a tourist site. Kosoko, a descendant of the late King Kosoko of Lagos, appealed at a news conference held at Kosoko Palace in Lagos Island. The news agency of Nigeria NAN reports that the Paramount ruler is also a tourism consultant and owner of Ikorodu-based Origin Gardens and Zoo. King Kosoko was the Oba of Lagos between 1845 and 1851. His insistence on the slave trade was a pretext of the 1851 British bombardment of Lagos for which they went into exile in Ekpe. He said the briefing was also to notify the public of the remembrance of his late father who died 150 years ago and celebrates his first anniversary as the Oloja of Lagos. The building situated in the heart of Lagos Island remains architecturally strong with all the relics and artifacts of the late king intact. He described the building as historical, which the country should never forget and neglect, saying that it was one of the oldest buildings in Nigeria. They believe Lagos Island is strictly a commercial area and that such a building might not have been demolished for businesses, but the truth is that it remains and King Kosoko was buried here. He said the moment they are done with the renovation, we will seal our partnership and formal presentation with the state government and UNESCO. Kosoko urged Nigerians, both home and abroad, to patronize their country's tourist centers rather than neglecting them. It was gathered that the late king was a member of the Ologun Kutere royal family who reigned as Oba of Lagos from 1845 to 1851. He died in 1872 and was buried at Igaeroko in Lagos. And on to politics, the aspiration of Yaya Belu, the executive governor of Kogi State, to become the next president of Nigeria after President Muhammadu Buhari has received a major boost from the south-south region of the country following a consultative tour to stakeholders in the zone by a political group Bilo Ambassadors Network Ban. Ban, a major body formed to pro propagate youthful leadership with the projection of Yaya Bello for the 2023 presidency with over 3 million members across the country, ransacked the nooks and crannies of Kwai Bomedo, Cross Rivers, Delta and the Bayosa states, meeting political traditional leaders with youth groups, professional bodies, as well as students' groups solicitating endorsements for Yaya Bello. The group is led by its national coordinator, Anthony Edogbo, in the company of its South-South regional coordinator, Paul Ibarra, visited former House members, party chieftains, academic dons, renowned traditional rulers, grassroots mobilizers, as well as several former and current local government chairmen and councillors across the states in the region. Noteworthy in the groups, your of South South was when it was welcomed to River State by mammoth crowd comprising of youth and political leaders awaiting the arrival of the team. Upon the arrival, the team was led to the famous palace of King Tom Ateke, the ex-militant leader and first Amanyabo of Ochoriki Kingdom in Okirika, where Ban received his support and royal blessings for Governor Bello. Meeting with the former chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Akwaibom states and former House member representing Oron 3 federal constituency Otui Tatayo, the group led their group patron chief Sonny Banga didn't struggle to get an endorsement for Bello as a former lawmaker said I would gladly offer him ideas for the development of our country, noting they have played their part while in the government and that it is time for the young people to wake up and take over. Ban in his tour consulted met several other notable personalities, including retired Deputy Inspector General of Police Udom U Upodom, Godwin Afanige, former Commissioner in Akwaibom State Ak, Samuel Akwan, 
former senior special assistant to the governor of the state, Sam Erwing, former military governor of Ogun and Weaver State, and respected traditional rulers like the Obong of Calabar, Edidem Opo Okonoba CO2, Sam Obo, a two times council chairman and party chieftain, as well as member of the Edo State APC Working Committee. His Royal Highness Angola Koki Aboko Bene, King Omoni VII Amayanabo of the Keke Kingdom in River State, and the former House of Representatives member, as well as Deputy State Chairman River State PDP. It also met a Miete Eferebo, the River State APC Deputy Chairman. Others met include Dr. Omo Francis, Edo State APC well officials who assured Ban that they will do the needful and several other personalities in Delta and Bayelsa states, engineer Lawrence Oka and chief barrister Frank Okafi Eriwele. The team met with several groups which includes the National Association of Nigerian Students, South South Chapter, National Association of Aquibum State Students, drawn from all higher institutions in the state, Igbo Youth Network in Aquibum State, Charging Point International Political Group in Calabar, then Concerned Citizens of Cross Rivers, National Association of Cross Rivers State Students, National Youth Council of Nigeria, Cross Rivers Chapter, and Cross Rivers Progressives Union. And now to the news from the foreign scene. Fighting continued on Monday, the fifth day of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, despite talks aimed at securing a ceasefire. Missile strikes killed dozens of civilians in the country's second city, Kharkiv, while air raid sirens sounded again in the capital, Kyiv. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky called on the Russian bombardment of Kharkiv a war crime. There were reports of fierce shelling in the northern city of Cherniviv, Russia is attacking Ukraine on several fronts, but its advance has been slowed by Ukrainian resistance. All three cities remain under Ukraine control, away from the battlefields. Economic and diplomatic moves have continued. President Vladimir Putin has banned Russians from moving money abroad as he tries to halt a plunge in the value of rubble following the imposition of sanctions. And a rare emergency session of the United Nations General Assembly has heard a demand from the Secretary General for an immediate halt to hostilities. And on the northern border with Belarus, Ukrainian and Russian officials ended their first round of talks. There was little to expectation the session would bring a breakthrough, but the Ukrainian officials said both sides would now return to their respective capitals for further consultations before a second round of negotiations. Russia said both had agreed to continue talking and will meet again in the next few days. In a late night address, Zelensky said there were eyewitness accounts of civilians being deliberately targeted during a sustained attack on Kharkiv. Videos shared on social media showed rockets landing in Kharkiv in what some defense analysts describe as typical of a cluster munition strike on a defense of an area. Russia has previously denied targeting residential areas. And now to sports news. Russia on Monday criticizes expulsion from the World Cup and suspension of its team from all international competitions as discriminatory. In response to the latest international measures against Moscow for invading Ukraine, it has an obvious discriminatory character and harms a huge number of athletes, coaches, employees of clubs and national teams, and most importantly, millions of Russian and foreign fans whose interests international sports organizations must protect in the first place. The Russian Football Union said in a statement, Premier League strugglers Leeds named American J. Shea Mash as their new manager on Monday, a day after sacking Marcelo Billa. The 48-year-old former RB Leipzig boss arrives with Leeds sitting just two points above the relegation zone. The club said Marsh had been appointed pending international clearance on a deal running until June 2025 and that he will take charge of Saturday's league game at Leicester. Leeds are deep in relegation trouble after Bill's last reign imploded with five defeats in their last six games. They conceded 20 goals in Bill's last final five matches, culminating in a 4-0 home defeat by Tottenham on Saturday that proved the last straw for the Leeds sport. 
Bill Lazar was hampered by injuries to key players Calvin Phillips, Patrick Bamford and Liam Cooper, but his refusal to change his attacking philosophy despite Leeds' defensive problems was just as damaging. Marsh has little time to fix those issues with just 12 games left in the Premier League season. He was dismissed by Leipzig in December after a disappointing five-month spell with the Bundesliga club. Marsh had ended the Leipzig job after leading Red Bull Salzburg to Austrian League and Cup double in both 2020 and 2021. He helped develop Erling Haaland Salzburg before the Norway striker joined Borussia Dortmund in 2019. Marsh had previously as Leipzig's assistant manager where he served on the current Manchester United interim boss Ralph Ragnick. Otta said that Jesse is someone we identified a number of years ago during his time at Red Bull Salzburg and we believe his philosophy and style of football aligns with the fact that the club will suit the players very well. the bedrock of the society. It is everything. Everyone needs a house to live in but a supportive family is what builds a happy and a successful home. It is Family Affairs on Malakai TV every Saturday by 7 p.m. Join Baladubu Janet as she takes you on an exclusive interview with guests, marriage counselors, doctors and many more where they get to share their experiences and together we build the society at large. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, log on to Malakai TV or like our Facebook page, MLC TV. You can also follow us on Instagram at MLC TV 2021. For advert and sponsorship, call the numbers displayed on your screen. It's Family Affairs where we discuss family matters. Coming your way soon on MLC TV. Matthias Ayodiji Peter is standing by for our entertainment news. Over to you. On entertainment news today, in anticipation of his concert at London's O2 Arena, David O released a promo video with legendary American actor Morgan Freeman as the voiceover. Freeman says in his booming voice, We rise by lifting others. This is part of his legacy. Everything he does is for this purpose. This music is a way of not just inspiring people, but lifting them. This is very huge as Freeman has been the voiceover for corporations like Netflix and comedian Dave Chappelle. He is also famous for playing God in the movie Even Almighty and his role in the critically acclaimed movie Shawshank Redemption. David is expected to pack the London O2 Arena for his concert on Saturday, March 5, 2022, and his fans were invited to stream his music live on Udox. Still on entertainment news from Africa, veteran filmmaker Tunde Kilani has announced plans to produce a new movie immortalizing late Fuji icon Aide Barista. Kilani recently unveiled plans for the new project during the grand finale of a festival organized to celebrate the life and achievements of the musician. Speaking at the event, the movie producer said the forthcoming project, unofficially titled Sikiru Ainde Barista, would help spotlight the musician's contribution to the growth of Fuji music. My decision is irreversible. Barista deserves to be so immortalized because of his numerous work, which still sets the pace for living Fuji musicians in the market, Kelani said. Born Sikiru Ainde Balogun, Ainde Barista passed away on December 16, 2010, in the United Kingdom after a brief battle with an undisclosed illness. Kelani's announcement comes in the wake of the success of Ainla Ibao Peak on the late Akpala singer Ainla Omowura, which was met with positive reviews. In 2021, month after its theoretical success, it bagged multiple AMA nominations. And that is all on entertainment news today. My name is Matthias Ayodeji Peter, reporting for MLC TV. Back to our cast for more stories.
Thanks, Matthias, for the update. And that is all on our news package today. Join us tomorrow evening via our YouTube channel, Malachi TV, to watch our news hour. You could also like and follow us through our Facebook page, MLC TV, Instagram, MLC TV 2021, and Twitter at MLC TV 1. For your event coverage, feedback, comment, or contribution, please call any of our numbers displayed on your screen. And don't forget our special programs designed to educate, inform, entertain, and reform. The programs are Family Affairs Saturday by 7 p.m., Political Arena Saturday by 9 p.m., and Local Government and You Friday by 9 p.m. Don't forget our news is on Mondays to Friday. We are Malachi TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. I am Morno Balagugu, and do not forget to be your brother's keeper to build a united and peaceful society together. Good evening and see you tomorrow.